Hey, what's up? It's Common Guys, and Bash at Berlin was great. Randy Orton delivered, CM Punk delivered, and everybody else was amazing. My favorite match was the Randy Orton match, but before we get into that, let me recap a little bit. Let me give you my opinion on the rest of the show. So here we go. First up, we had Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes for the title. And let me tell you something, going into this match, they were trying to play up that Kevin Owens is going to turn heel like he always does. But I was always of the camp that didn't really like this angle and here's why. Kevin Owens has been fighting the bloodline. He has teamed up with Sami Zayn. In my opinion, he has turned permanently babyface. Sure, he can have a heel run, but to go heel against the ultimate babyface Cody Rhodes, I think hurts his image. And going into this match as well, I knew Randy would eventually come back to SmackDown and he's going to need a tag team partner as Kevin Owens would be heel. Randy right now is at the ultimate heel phase of his career. It wouldn't make much sense. So going into this match, these two men should have just been delivering wrestling goodness and they delivered. I'm talking about Kevin Owens escaping out of the crossroads, Kevin Owens giving stunners, Cody trying to finish Kevin Owens with the crossroads and Kevin Owens just kicking out. But it eventually gets to the point where we go back to where the story was going, which is whether Kevin Owens is going to turn heel. And remember, going into this match, Cody had a hurt knee. So when it came time to Cody playing up his hurt knee, Kevin Owens sees an opportunity to jump on it and claim the victory. But instead, Kevin Owens takes the high road, asks the referee to look and attend to Cody Rhodes to see if Cody can continue the match, and Cody does. Because Kevin Owens took the high road, it led to him losing. Cody does celebrate with Kevin Owens because they are friends at the end of the day, and so the match ends with Cody winning on a crossroads. But here's my opinion. I think this was the best outcome. Kevin Owens won the title a long time ago because Triple H interfered, allowing him to get the victory. Well, this time around, he wants to win the title fair. He deserves the title at this point, all the good work he has put in in the recent years. I do think he will eventually get his hands on the title, but it needs to be done in a way where Kevin Owen looks good and wins as a babyface. This is the best way to continue his career for now. And the next match up was Alba Fire and Isaiah Ladon versus Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair for the women's tag team titles. This match was good. There's not really much I can say. The right woman won at the end of the day, which was Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. I do think that at this point, I would like to see Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair stop being such a dominant force in the tag team title realm and move on to try to go after Nia Jax for the title belt or have a feud within each other. Because as long as they have the title, they are the most dominant force and nothing else is believable that they should be losing. The next match elevated the show for me. The next match was the strap match. CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. And I gotta admit something, the crowd got me into this one because when CM Punk's music hit, they went insane. CM Punk, Germany, it's his territory. Yes, Gunther got an amazing pop too as well, so did Randy, but CM Punk, I thought, wow. He is over international. He is over everywhere. And that is the momentum carrying into that match. With the crowd roaring, Drew McIntyre couldn't take it and just started beating on CM Punk before the bell even rung. These men beat each other with the strap. Who threw CM Punk through the table? Then as Drew carried around CM Punk on his shoulder, tapping each corner of the ring to finish the match CM Punk 
as Drew would turn, would tap the corner as well, trying to tie with Drew. CM Punk delivered a sharpshooter, making Drew pass out. CM Punk delivered multiple go to sleeps on Drew. Drew's unconscious body, CM Punk grabbed his bracelet back. Without a doubt, this match was better than the Seth Rollins, Drew, and CM Punk match. This match delivered on every level. This match was amazing. A true classic. And I am hoping we get one more match. Maybe at Bad Blood, Hell in the Cell. I want to see it happen. I would be so excited to see that happen because these men just do not like each other. Coming off of that match, the next matchup was the Terror Twins, Mommy, Rhea Ripley versus Damian Priest versus the Judgment Days, Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio. And that match shocked me to the core because I did not in any way, shape or form know how this match was going to go down. I had a sneaky suspicion that the Judgment Day were gonna look strong and beat the Terror Twins, but what I got instead was a beat down. When I mean beat down, I mean beat down. Rhea literally grabs Dom and slams him to the mat, chokes Dom with her legs. Damien and Rhea just grab Liv and Dom and throw them around like they're paperweight. Add insult to injury and Rhea Ripley gets the pin on Liv Morgan. For more insult, licks Liv's face. What's next for the Judgment Day? I have no idea at this point. I think personally they're buried, they're done. The Terror Twins have won. Forget about Jey Uso coming to the rescue. They don't need Jey Uso. It's over. Now, is the match going to continue? Is Liv Morgan going to lose the title belt soon? Probably. I don't think there's much gas left after Rhea just pinned her. I don't think this is going to be a WrestleMania feud. I think this is done and it's over. The Judgment Day is going to ultimately move on to attacking somebody else, feuding with somebody else, Sammy and Jay. But I think as for Rhea and Damian Priest, there's still time for Damian Priest because he hasn't gotten Finn Balor yet. So they might build that up as the main event for WrestleMania. But for Rhea Ripley, it's over. She's going to get the title belt very soon. I think the Judgment Day as a whole have been buried. All of those members couldn't do anything against the Terror Twins. For the final match, we have Randy Orton versus Gunther for the heavyweight title. And let me tell you, the crowd was going crazy for both these men. And Randy is a legend. He acknowledged that. He clapped with the crowd. He waved with the crowd. He was in it. I This is Randy at the highest level at this point. This is Randy ready to get back into the world title belt champ level at this point. He's ready. I think personally, it's time for WWE to pull the trigger. Yes, Cody Rhodes is having a great story. Randy was never going to move to Raw because SmackDown needs Randy and Randy is thriving on SmackDown. It's time to pull the trigger and give Cody his match against Randy, have Randy ultimately win because after his match with Gunther, there is no way you're going to tell me that Randy is not ready once again to be a world champion. Gunther was trying to work in his chops, but Randy was smarter than that. He worked on Gunther's arm to make sure that Gunther could be beaten. Randy was tactical throughout this match physically trying to just hurt Gunther as much as possible to limit the power of his chops. But Gunther kept in the fight, slowly working on Randy, slowly looking for opportunities where he could jump on Randy and try to choke him or put him to sleep. And then it gets to the point where Randy starts to get frustrated because Randy delivers an RKO out of nowhere and Gunther kicks out. Gunther power bombs Randy Orton, but Randy does not stop for nothing. He just keeps kicking out, but Randy 
Randy eventually makes Gunther get out of the ring all sweaty and tired and Randy drops Gunther on the announcer's table thinking that the match was over. Randy just does his pose and the crowd goes wild. When Randy goes back in the ring thinking that Gunther's out and done, that Gunther lunges at him and starts to put the chokehold to make him go to sleep. And that's what happens. Randy passes out, Gunther retains, but the crowd is insane because these two men show great respect for each other and there is no way coming off of this match that you can just have Randy going back to tag team matches with Kevin Owens. And with that being said, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite match was from Bash at Berlin. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, see you on the next one.